I think I've always been a maker. You know, sort of enjoyed making things. And the way I work has tended to be that I'll start with the material. So I'll find materials and then I'll work out what I can make from them. Because making is is what I'm good at and it's the, my happy place. Um, that's always seemed like the obvious thing that I should be doing with my life, but I found that difficult to reconcile with um, a concern for the environment and my awareness of how how wasteful consumerism is and how unsustainable most uh, manufacturing practices are nowadays. I've been making footwear from reclaimed materials for over 10 years now. Um, and the materials I use are mostly offcuts from the upholstery industry, uh, leather and other upholstery fabrics and wool. It started when I was working at a furniture company and I realised that all of the offcuts of leather from the upholstery department were going into landfills. Uh, Jack, the upholstery manager, kindly agreed to save some for me and I worked out what I could make and slowly developed the business that way. Although I don't work there anymore, Jack still saves the waste leather for me and I found other suppliers from the upholstery industry. You get some really luscious, I mean these are big scraps, well, yeah. which I can't use. I think that link to other makers who work with the same materials is really valuable. Um, the knowledge that can be passed on and the shared understanding and respect for the materials. Most of their fabrics are polyester based. They're yeah. really hard wearing, mm -hmm. and some of them are machine washable, which means that you can start cleaning yeah, them. Right. Um, the other thing that I've always been grateful for is the way you've taught me stuff. Like, you, I mean, you gave me that sewing machine. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. I've yeah. still got that. <laughs> and do you remember t showing me... Um, oh, to Sky. Uh, to Sky. Sky yeah, to Leather. That yeah, was yeah, about yeah, eight years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, yeah. I mean, teaching, uh, passing on that kind of knowledge. I have t three trainees at the moment, which mm. they come out di on different days, one day a week. Um, and it's really nice training people up, it's really nice showing people because mm. there's so much that you know that isn't really available and it's stuff like that, how to thin the leather yeah. so that you can sew it on yeah. the machine or use it in a different way um, mm. and passing on those kind of skills. Yeah, I think, yeah, and I've realised since trying to teach someone else how to make my slippers is actually I know more than I thought I did because you just make stuff, don't you, yeah, and you don't, yeah, yeah. you don't realise actually how how much you're processing underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you've been yeah. doing it well, you get to know the machine, you also mm. get to know the different fabrics yeah. and how they feel and 
whether they're going to stretch or whether they're going to pull or whether they're going to pucker, you, yeah. you know that. So then when you're working with it, you just know what yeah. to do to get it right. Yeah. But uh, with anything like that, it's one of those things practice. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the challenges of working with replay materials is that there's such a range yeah. of types and yeah. then you've got to rely on your instinct and your yeah. knowledge to Yeah, and you do work. have to have a good industrial sewing machine. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when you started on a domestic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember saying to you, you must get through an awful lot of needles. This is a box of leather off-cut. Um, there's not much in there. There's also faux leather, but not many people use that. Yeah, I can't. I can't use that anymore. Because um, I'm, I'm. Did I tell you I'm using carpet now for these? Yeah, results? yeah. So I'm not making. I used to make like a wadge. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. So these. The so I mean, Hollyberries does take this, but not all the time. Mm. And then there are some very, very luscious offcuts of fabric. Oh, yeah. So there's quite a few. And again, these pieces I can't use in anything to do with upholstery. I think that circular economy diagrams can feel quite abstract and it can be difficult to imagine how to bring that kind of change about, you know, how to eliminate waste from our product systems in you know in a real life way um, but in practice I think there are lots of opportunities and untapped potential there to make use of this kind of pre-consumer waste and I think there's a lot of will there from from people who work with with all kinds of materials to avoid waste and to find a better way of working that enables us to reduce what goes into landfill. So there is a, the, the, the scrap scheme in Wandsworth, it's a very big mm. scheme that takes stuff which uh, schools in London affiliate to or South London affiliate to, they can get all these things for their arts and craft project things but they won't take any more of my stuff because they are over full oh, with stuff. Oh really? So are the schools not using much then? Well they are but it's oh, just that uh, everybody knows about them so yeah. everybody's donating stuff and they inst and they won't take my fabrics that's one thing they won't take. Why is that? Because they've got way too many. Oh wow okay so, so there's an overload of... And I think there's there's room that, that you know somebody needs to be uh, distributing these, collecting this and distributing yeah, them yeah, to various organi craft organisations. Yeah. Still haven't found somebody who will take these so there's more more to do because this mm. j just gets thrown away and it's crazy. Mm. 